During 2021, the Met Office and a range of partners, including the Met Office Academic Partner Universities, organized a series of hackathon events. They offered the opportunity to develop pieces of work in what is a safe environment. The purpose of the hackathons was to bring together people from different backgrounds with different insights and expertise to make progress on a number of challenges of relevance to COP26. Over the last several decades, we've generated large data sets right from single stations off the coast of Plymouth, right up to Atlantic Ocean scale expeditions documenting the change in ocean pH. Our challenge to the participants in the hackathon was to envision new ways of looking at the data to convey the extent of change to new audiences. The team I was in was focused on the challenge of visualizing uncertainty in future coastal flood risk. We went from a concept of wanting to do something in visualizing this risk on day one to by the end of day two, having developed a full 3D virtual room where we could uh, tour through Swansea Bay to investigate and demonstrate the coastal flood risk changing in future climate scenarios. In our small team, a group of data scientists from OS were joined by some very enthusiastic and knowledgeable researchers from academia, government and from the private sector. Our proposal was to use crowdsourced wildlife observations to estimate biodiversity in the UK. We worked as a team with one person coding and the rest of us contributing in a kind of virtual mobbing session. Our output was a set of maps showing areas of potentially low biodiversity, which could perhaps be targeted for future investment. I ran the uh, the hackathon that happened at University College London and so we used the Met Office's UK Climate Projections 18 data set uh, and we created our own virtual server and we put a subset of that data on there along with programs to run that data and then we allowed students ranging from first years all the way up to PhD students to have a play with it. So we ended up having people looking at wildfire in the Britain and, 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 and understanding that and then also right the way to people looking at uh, whether uh, Premier League teams would be able to have football games in August without needing to modify for the extreme heat. I guess for me personally, it also really brought home the importance of uh, following kind of data conventions and making sure your data is properly documented and has all the necessary metadata um, to ensure that anyone can just pick it up and understand how to use it and what it is. Um, we're trying to make the outputs from our research as freely available. So this is really important to us to ensure that the data that we produce can be used as widely as possible. Discussions initiated at Leeds that to focus on the Global South, specifically East and West Africa, building on Leeds' expertise and collaborations in this area. It was a good opportunity to have all the CMIP data available to us and to have members of our team who had worked with that and similar data sets before so that we bypass the classic obstacle of finding out what data is available and where to get it. The hackathon enabled us to join up with sectors that were important to what we were looking at. So for our team that was KenGen which produces over half of the electricity for Kenya and we were focused on hydroelectric power and how that might change with climate change. This is quite useful because very early on we were able to get a key document, an Excel spreadsheet, which had some data in it, which actually enabled us to do the rest of our work and inspired us to come up with ideas uh, during the hackathon. They also were able to dispel some of the myths that we had about uh, this particular topic, so producing electricity from hydroelectric dams. And that was quite useful to steer us away from doing the wrong thing in the hackathon. So the vision for the hackathon was to bring a research community together, particularly tar targeting early career researchers, but drawing from both disciplines, from energy and climate, and also from academia, policy and industry. Working together on concrete activities in the hackathon led to a really productive exchange of know-how, um, enabled to build networks of contacts and understanding, and hopefully we'll see the fruits of this in years to come. While organising this, I also co-led a project looking at how we can use machine learning methods to downscale 
daily climate model data to hourly resolution, as this is much more useful for energy system modelling. Over the week, we made some fantastic progress for two metre temperatures and solar radiation. We're hoping that in the long term, these methods could be implemented and applied to the Met Office UKCP climate projection. I co-led one of the groups working in the hackathon and we aimed to join together a climate model and a power system planning model so that it could be run by using citizen science computing. We hope to take this prototype system forward in the future to be developed as a community resource. Overall, I think what we learned is that the hackathons provided a new way of working. They did succeed in bringing together people who perhaps wouldn't have interacted and they also raise the profile of what can be achieved with climate data when addressing the challenges um, of climate change and climate variability. Mm -hmm.